Among the symbolist poets, one of the most renowned figures is Achieu Rabel, who crafted brilliant poems before reaching the age of 20. He boldly defied the conventions of bourgeois life, ignited a passionate affair with fellow poet Paul Verlaine, and embarked on wanderings throughout Europe. Rabel's aim was to convey the poet's personal vision, a feat he accomplished notably in poems like Le Bateau Ivre from 1871. His life and poetry were marked by vibrant unconventionality, notably his aversion to orthodox techniques, including the abandonment of traditional rhyme schemes. A prodigious talent from an early age, Rabo's creations have left an indelible mark on French literature, making significant contributions to the symbolist movement and reshaping modern poetry. Rabo's poetry was revolutionary, characterized by its vivid imagery and innovative use of language, boldly departing from established poetic norms. Despite his brief poetic career, by the age of 21, Rabo had already ceased writing altogether, choosing to turn away from the literary world. He embarked on a nomadic journey, traversing various regions of Europe, Asia and Africa. The theme of voyages and personal liberation permeated Rabo's poetry and life. He grew up in a small town in northeastern France with a religious mother, his father having abandoned the family. Arthur Rabot was born in Charleville, France, in October 1854, the second son of Frédéric Rabot, an army captain, and Marie-Catherine Vitalier Cuiv. His father's military service kept him away from home for most of their seven-year marriage. Rabo and his siblings were relocated by their mother to the Cour d'Orléans in 1862, hoping to provide them with better influences. Rabo and his brother received their initial education at the Pensier Rosa, where their mother enforced strict study habits, often resorting to Latin verse and meal denials as punishment. Rabo's perspective on school changed when he attended the Collège de Charleville, where he was introduced to fairy tales and adventurous stories. He excelled academically and exhibited his poetic talent around the age of 15, producing one of his initial poems, Ophélie, which later gained recognition as one of his finest works. In the latter part of 1870, Rabo began rebelling against what he saw as a dull existence. He even ran away to Paris at one point, leading to his arrest and incarceration in Mazas prison. During this time, he indulged in drinking and theft. His first works, Les Etrennes de Orphelin and Comédie en Trois Baisers, were published in 1870 coinciding with the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War and the closure of his college. In 1871, Rabo briefly joined the Paris Commune, an insurgent group where this involvement lasted only three weeks. In the subsequent year, Rabo corresponded briefly with the contemporary poet Paul Verlaine, which led him to Paris. There, he stayed with Verlaine and his new wife, putting a strain on Verlin's marriage. Harbo's presence was marked by disruptive behavior, excessive alcohol and drug use, and an intense but short-lived love affair with Verlin. The two writers traveled to London in 1872, with Verlin willingly leaving his wife and child behind. They supported themselves by teaching and spent their days reading. After further travels to Belgium and England, their relationship deteriorated and Verlaine returned to his wife. They attempted a reconciliation, resulting in Rabo being shot in the left wrist. Subsequently, Verlaine's erratic behavior led to his arrest and charge with attempted murder, which was later reduced to a two-year prison sentence.
Rabo returned to Charleville and completed his prose work, Une Saison en Fer, or A Season in Hell. This work is a notable example of symbolist writing. In the mid 1870s, Rabo and Verlaine made for the last time. By then, Rabo had ceased writing in favor of a working life dedicated to extensive travel throughout Europe, mostly on foot. In 1876, he enlisted in the Dutch colonial army to secure free passage to Java, but subsequently deserted and escaped into the jungle. He later returned to France secretly, aware that capture would result in execution by firing squad. Rabo then travelled to Cyprus, working as a stone quarry foreman and contracting typhoid. He eventually had to return to France due to his deteriorating health. By 1880, Rabo had settled in Aden in Yemen, working for the Bardi Agency. However, he soon abandoned his job following his habitual pattern. He established his own business as a merchant in Harar, Ethiopia, trading coffee and firearms. After this venture failed and he experienced severe pain in his right knee, Rabo returned to France. Initially misdiagnosed with tubercular synovitis, he eventually had his right leg amputated. However, it was later discovered that he was suffering from bone cancer. Despite his fragile health, Rabo returned to Africa in August and endured escalating pain. He was confined to his sister's home and received his last rites before passing away in November 1891 at the age of 37. Rabo's remains were repatriated to France where he was laid to rest in charleville messieurs the majority of Rabo's works were published posthumously, including Le Désert de la Mort, Pose Evangelique, and a substantial collection of his correspondence. Rabo drew inspiration from prominent poets who preceded him, as well as his contemporaries. Notable influences on his work include Charles Baudelaire, Paul Verlaine, Stéphane Mohamé, during his early years as a poet, Arthur Rabo harbored a strong desire to become a seer, someone with the supernatural ability to foresee the future. Throughout his career, he strove to attain this visionary status by pushing the boundaries of poetic expression and by attempting to materialize the supernatural in his poetry. Rabo's journey began with a study of the works of the symbolists Charles Baudelaire, Stéphane Mahamé, and Paul Verlaine, who were pioneers in exploring new ways of poetic expression. He adopted their revolutionary techniques and modes of expression, which allowed him to create poetry that hinted at absolute truths indirectly through symbols and metaphors, thus marking the birth of symbolism. Rabo's initial foray into the literary world was marked by his poem The Drunken Boat, which symbolized his own youthful rebellion and departure from conventional Parnassian poetry. This work showcased Rabo's early fascination with the symbolist movement, particularly their use of metaphor as a central organizing principle. He transformed himself into a nautical vessel creating a metaphorical narrative of a boat adrift in a river filled with both destruction and beauty. This poem exemplified the symbolist's preference for suggestion over explicit statements and their willingness to employ metaphor to convey complex ideas. Rabo's departure from traditional Parnassian poetic structure was a clear rebellion against the simplistic rhyme and rhythm of his predecessors. He introduced regularity in rhyme and rhythm while adopting symbolism's imaginative and metaphorical approach. His poem, The Drunken Boat, garnered attention from leading symbolist poet Paul Verlaine, which led to Rabo's invitation to Paris and initiated a significant shift in his poetry. 
His poem Vowels marked a more profound transition into symbolism. Hrabo introduced synesthesia into his work, connecting colors with vowels and exploring the juxtaposition of contrasting images. He associated the color red with the letter I, creating a demonic portrait, while green was linked to U, evoking a utopian landscape. This interplay between hellish and heavenly imagery was the hallmark of Rabo's evolving style. Although he continued to use formal verse, his innovative imagery and suggestive voice brought him closer to symbolism. In Une Saison en Orfer, or A Season in Hell, Rabo departed even further from the traditional poetic form. He embraced free verse, abandoning structured rhyme and meter. This work marked a significant departure not only in form but also in content. Rabo delved into the realm of the unconscious, a concept that would later be explored more extensively by Sigmund Freud in the early 20th century. Rabo's exploration of his unconscious mind challenged conventional understanding and showcased his willingness to venture into new territory. While Rabo was initially influenced by symbolism, his distinctive voice and exploration of the unconscious in A Season in Hell transcended the boundaries of this poetic movement. His departure from metaphor-based organization and his direct narrative style signaled a shift away from pure symbolism. Harpo's journey as a poet allowed him to bridge the gap between symbolism and later movements, making his work a significant touchstone in the evolution of modern poetry.